Now, we mentioned last week that Japan was about to go on a massive spending spree to boost the economy. Well, now we know where all the money is going to. The stimulus package, worth $274 billion, will be spent over two years. Now, this year's spending is less than half of the approved package. Most of this money is being set aside to give cheap loans to government entities and state-run companies. About one-third of the funds will go to infrastructure projects that are already under development. Then there are the cash handouts for earthquake-affected households in the country's southern region. Well, those make up another $3.2 billion. This is the third fiscal stimulus package announced by the government since 2013. Well, for more on this, Seijiro Takashita joins us from Japan. He's a professor at the School of Management and Information at the University of Shizuoka. Now, Seijiro, you've been explaining complicated economics to TV viewers for years. What's the best way to explain what the Japanese government's trying to do here? Well, actually, what the Japanese government is trying to do is make a lot more focus into transitional long-term growth areas rather than looking at short-term uh, stint. But unfortunately, I think the market is really asking for short-term answers. And there really is no you know, short-term solution to a long-term problem. So, Jira, why is the Japanese government so concerned about deflation? And do you think it's targeting the wrong problem? Well, you know, deflation is, is a bit like diabetes. It causes a lot of other problems. And it sticks to you for such a long time. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why um, Japan, the government, is trying to get out of this quite desperately because it does have other consequences, negative knock-on effect. And, for example, you've seen the Japanese you know, policies trying to uh, rejuvenate demand by inducing, for example, financial policies and making changes there. But you can see things really haven't changed fundamentally, and that is because demand is still remaining very, very low. And a lot of it is extremely uh, uh, due to the fact that, you know, this deflationary condition is still going on in Japan. Well, some analysts and economists say that Japan should really be focusing on encouraging a Japanese Silicon Valley and investing in innovation. What do you make of that? Well, yes, I mean, Japan is trying to do that. In fact, from the late 80s, you know, our R&D expenditure has exceeded that of cap capital expenditure. So obviously we should be progressing more into product innovation from process innovation, which the Japanese are excellent at. Um, but that said, that's pretty difficult considering our structure of our organizations, which is much more skewed and much more uh, suited for progressing in, in um, uh in, in process innovation rather than product innovation. But as you pointed out, we have to be the forefront leaders in many of these issues, especially in the high-tech areas. And we should try to foster a lot of innovations in that sense. But unfortunately, our structure, our societal values, our financial issues, all these things are not really suited to, to make the Silicon Valley of the Japanese version here in Japan. So, Jerry, this is the third stimulus package in the last three years. Do you think that this one will make any difference? Well, we really have to see the answer of whether it's going to work or not on a long-term basis, because what he's trying to tackle, and I hope he's really going to focus on this, is long-term structural issues. For example, like inducing womanomics, uh, women to work, and basically increasing their workforce, because we have a serious problem on the demographic side. Uh, these things have to be addressed, but we have to wait for quite a long time for these, you know, uh, to see the trajectory of these uh, policies are working or not. But you can see the market is becoming very, very impatient. They're looking at, at best, for the GDP figures. If not, you know, how the market will react tomorrow. So we're seeing this gap between the policy and actually uh, how the market reacts, because the market focal point is becoming a lot shorter than what the government is trying to aim at. So, Jerry, this is a huge stimulus package, and the Japanese government is in debt. How can it afford it? Well, they're going. Uh, there's a rumor that they were going for 50-year bond. Uh, they rejected that, but uh, basically, they will continue to pile this up. And yes, it is a long-term problem. The good thing is that 94% of debt is consumed within, so we don't have problems as, uh, for example, like in Southern Europe. So this problem isn't going to burst out right away, but it's not something that we can sit back and basically be relaxed about. I mean, especially considering. Uh, uh, I repeat the point that if you consider about the demographics of Japan, uh, the potential growth uh, would be in question, which basically exacerbates our you know, debt conditions. And we have to start putting discipline into this area or else I think uh, there would be a long term problem and a burden for the next generation to come. So, Jiro Takashita in Japan, thank you very much for joining us on Money Talks.